We'll begin with introduction of members and seating of alternates. And we'll begin with town staff. Dawn? And Dan? Dan Beret, town planner. Okay, and for commission members, uh, we'll begin with introductions starting on my left. Victoria Chechet. Bob Ellsworth. Chantel Foster. Carolyn Freeman. Tom Bransfield. Tom, could I ask you to be seated for Rob, please? Sure. Thank you. Okay, next item is to uh, accept the agenda. May I have a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. And a second? Second. That was uh, Carolyn. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Say no. Okay, the agenda is accepted as presented. We'll begin with um, one of several public hearings that we're going to have tonight. The first is application 22-06, Penfield Hill Road and Stephen Tom Road proposed eight lot, eight lot resubdivision with wetlands on site. Application and property of Robert W. Olson, map 61, lot 14, zone RR. Now it's been a while since we discussed this, this public hearing uh, remains open from our November meeting. So could I ask for a brief recap of um, what this application is about and then any additional information you'd like to present? Uh, yes, uh, for the record, Frank Magnata, the uh, consulting engineer representing the uh, uh, owner, uh, Mr. Robert uh, Olson. As the, uh, just to be brief, uh, as kind of a, uh, a reminder from the last presentation, the, uh, it's an eight-lot subdivision uh, with frontage on both uh, Penfield Hill Road and Stephen Tom Road. Excuse me, Frank. I know you, you're concerned that uh, everybody can see on the monitor. Could you maybe turn it just a little bit more towards the camera? I just don't want to, I don't want to blind that. I've got copy. Move this. You need some help? No, I'm sorry. I just want to move this stand out of the way so I can move. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, because, yeah, you were concerned about the angle. I think that's, yeah. That, yeah, Frank, do you want to zoom in on the map so everyone can see what you're pointing if, to? If, or? Can, if you zoom in on the map, then, then I can turn it so everybody can see the, uh, the TV screen. Okay. I think it was oh, just it was at a different it, it Yeah, 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 we had the thumb drive. <coughs> yeah, that works well. Is that, is that clear to everybody? So everyone, Tom, can you see the screen for that? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, again, again, for the record, Frank Magnata. The, uh, the application uh, before you is, uh, is an eight-lot subdivision uh, with uh, lots uh, fronting on uh, Penfield Hill Road and Stephen Tom Road. Uh, this is a copy of the, the uh, record subdivision map that you see here. Uh, Penfield Hill Road is there. There's Stephen Tom Road that wraps around. Uh, the eight lots are in here. There are, are wetlands on the, on the site which are, which are highlighted in here and a small piece there. Uh, the, uh, there has been uh, quite a bit of discussion since the, your, your last hearing relative to the uh, open space, conservation easements, and things of that nature. Um, I'll have a drawing that I'll show. We, we did meet with the Conservation Commission at their last meeting. I'm assuming you got all that information uh, and the updates from what came did from the Conservation Commission. That, did we? We got I thought Liz sent that out. You got the uh, you got the eleven by se little eleven by seventeen. Oh, I think. Yeah, the, okay. the color map. Yeah. Oh yes, the uh, that one right there where I, I, it's in in red ink. Okay. Yes. But there's no right. We didn't get a write up or anything. Uh, I think this one is the one he's referring to. That shows the water. No, no, that's the uh, that's the watershed. It's not the one with the water. It is the other one, one that Victoria. Yes. It's, it's one that you do have here. That that is correct. Those two there. The the other one shows the watersheds. Uh, which were basically just references as a result of the stormwater report. Uh, so that is that is the, uh, the the application, the drawing that you have seen in your original set. Um, 
what, what's shown on the screen. What you do have in your package under the, with those colored late and half by 11s, that is this drawing. And it's basically at, with a meeting, uh, as, a, as a result of discussions with uh, the, uh, the Middlesex Land Trust and the Conservation Commission, the, uh, uh, the owner uh, in agreement with the, the Land Trust uh, has agreed to convey the area that you originally saw on your drawings that represented the con two conservation easements, which was this, this area here, which encompassed the wetlands and another one here on uh, which occurred on two lots which also encumbered the wetlands and in a small upland area um, those properties are to be conveyed uh, by deed to the land trust uh, originally they were just conservation easements but the land trust uh, basically agreed to and preferred uh, to take ownership of the uh, of the two parcels with with two conditions um, basically only one condition. The smaller area in the, the uh, southwest corner of the property here on Penfield Hill Road, that area um, is, uh, was requested because of access needs for the land trust between their property, which is directly across the street, and the property that abuts this subdivision to the north. That, that, that area now gives them connection, a corridor connection between the two parcels. And that's, that, is, that is for access between the two parcels. The other, um, the other parcel this, where the large wetland is, um, that, was, that is also going to be conf conveyed to th the land trust, but it was, it was under the uh, agreement and the stipulation that that parcel uh, was not to ever be used for public use or public access. It was purely for the land trust to take possession of and to monitor and maintain uh, the integrity of the wetlands. Um, so that was the agreement there. In addition to that, the uh, uh, Conservation Commission asked for a little bit more buffer area uh, outside of those, those properties that were being conveyed. And you will see, particularly on the large wetland here, you'll see a, a green hatched area on both sides. That is a, that's conservation easement. Which is which is n outside of and above and beyond the uh, properties that uh, would be conveyed to the uh, to the land trust. Um, the commission, the conservation commission, made one request from the original drawing that I presented to them. And if you look at lot number, this is lot number seven. Uh, this area along the rear of that lot. Originally, I had 15 feet. They asked for that. I think it would be changed to 25. Is that how it reads on the? I have 20 feet in blue. Yeah, 20 feet, yes. 20. It was originally 15, and they asked that we change it to 20. You see a handwritten mark there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, others, uh, the other easements are, are labeled and, and you know, were accepted as, as presented to the Conservation Commission. Now, if you look at the other wetland uh, on Penfield Hill Road, uh, in addition to what was the original conservation easements, which you see in gray, we also struck a line across the top of that to even out the, uh, the, the property, uh, th this, this conveyance. It takes, it takes the jogs out of it and makes that a straight line across this lot and another straight line across the next lot. So the, the boundaries uh, will be very, uh, very plain and very um, being able to basically reproduce and mark that boundary. And again, that's, that's a, full con a full conveyance. There is no other easements associated with that smaller property. It's, a, it's just the property convey it's conveyance itself. Fr Frank, just so I'm clear, so you're conveying the, the smaller parcel by Penfield, correct? That is correct. Now, are they, as a condition, would, would they be willing to merge that into their existing lot? Because we can't break off that portion. It doesn't conform to zoning without them doing so. Uh, I looked at that and I, 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 saw, I thought that it did conform. Is it, what, what it would it being taken out of the lot? Is it over an acre? Uh, the remaining lot, yes, is over an no, acre. No, the the conservation easement. Oh, this this area here. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's not quite an acre. It's just slightly. It, yeah, so an they acre. would need to, as a condition of that approval, merge that into their other lot. When you we, say when you say the other lot, 
You mean uh, I believe they own uh, an adjoining lot. Otherwise, uh, you can't. You the land can't, trust. You're, land trust. You're talking about. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we can't. We they, can't parcel that off. They do. They do about that. Uh, right in here. Yeah, so I, I would need a condition of approval to be that they would merge that with with their larger parent. Oh, piece. that would it would not be any type of a building lot. Yeah, it would it would be a conveyance well, to it'd be a conveyance uh, to right, an but, uh, right, but it, regardless to make a parcel, it needs to yes. meet zoning. Right. And if that's not an acre, then it doesn't meet zoning. Well, uh, again, uh, it, uh, I, I take exception with that because it's not a building lot; it's a conveyance of a parcel to an abutter. I wouldn't allow somebody to it's, even it's, put remaining lands on something like that. Well, it's not. It's, it's not. I know. I know. But if it was remaining lands, that's saying it's not a building lot. All right. Well, uh, but it would say, you know, not a building lot to be conveyed it, to. Yeah, but you can't make a parcel that doesn't meet zoning. Uh, I can if I convey it to an abutter. Right, but I would want that, that to that, be merged as long as, there's, as long as it's not a, as long as it's not a building lot. Yes, you're you're right. That cannot be a building lot. Right, but I still think it should be merged in. How, however, I mean, when you say merged in, yeah, I mean. I think it should be merged to the other parcel so that it conforms to zoning. Uh, to the land trust parcel. You're, you're yes. About. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's so. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm saying that parcel should be, as a condition of approval, merged with with its parent with the the, the lot next with door. With the existing. With yeah. The existing yeah. Parcel. That way, that that right. way it, it meets zoning. Would, would that, that be? Yeah. Right. That is that okay. is the land trust parcel. Okay. But yeah. yeah, I'm just saying that would be a condition of approval. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. I mean that that is the intent. Okay. No, I, yeah, I get what, I don't think, yeah, I thought it was possible. I just, that was something I failed to talk to you about earlier today. Yeah, no, that's not a problem. But uh, again, the, uh, the statutes allow conveyance between a budding property owners as long as they're not, uh, not building lots. Basically, they're just making pieces of land. This does not violate the, the zoning criteria for the, uh, for the uh, remaining lot here, which is the building lot. So that removing that right. one acre or so. Uh, from that lot did not uh, did not alter that Frank the last time um, we talked about about um, the driveway to lot number seven um, you had said it would you, you weren't able to to add any more space between it, it looks like you've expanded the space that originally that, that goes into where you have the driveway on the plan. Uh, on lot number seven, we've what we have expanded is not the not the area of the lot. We've expanded the conservation easement that covers that. Right, part. but the driveway is going to be on the conservation easement. No, no. So you've it's you've out, it's outside the of the driveway now. No, the driveway always was to the to the far eastern edge of that property line. The conservation easement does not go quite that far. Okay. No, we could not. So I misunderstood that. We I would, thought that the driveway was right on the. the it's side. outside of the conservation easement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, they, that that's something that we would normally not do, because yeah. the conservation easement language specifically says no building, no construction, no, no nothing. No roads. Right. No driveways. Nothing. Yeah. That would kind of violate that whole thing, and it wasn't necessary. Uh, the driveway already was because of the wetland location was pushed as far away from the wetland you know, as the property line permitted. But that was well outside of even the proposed conservation easement now. We did exp I did expand that and, and the driveway is still uh, out beyond that. There were no change in the property lines there or the driveway location from the original application. That, that has not changed. If there are any questions, I'll, I'll move on to the next drawing. Everything, this, these, are the, these are basically the only changes that have occurred since your last hearing. Uh, other than uh, wetlands, Inland Wetlands has issued their permit. Uh, we had, even at the time of your last hearing, we had the form, final approvals from the Chatham Health District, uh, in the engineering. Uh, Fire Marshal, I think, has also specified what we needed on the plan, and that has been approved. Uh, so we have all, all the pretty much the staff approvals uh, at that point. The conservation easement issue was the, was a really outstand the only outstanding issue that we need to address as far as the full application. Frank, the what, oh, I'm sorry, Bob, go ahead. I was just going to ask about um, Wetlands Commission. I believe 
uh, specified that two of the driveways were to be made gravel driveways? Yeah, uh, lot seven and eight. No, I'll, let me get to the next sheet and I can, sure. I can show you that. Okay. Uh, I think that was, that was their only condition, I believe. Uh, there were two. Uh, driveways for lot seven and eight will be gravel and not paved per Inland Wetlands Commission approval. And any future paving for lots seven and eight will require Inland Wetlands Commission approval. Right. Okay. Well, that's basically the same. Right. Yeah. I, I, I know they kind of put it yes. both ways. Um, yeah, because that would be a change from the original approval. So anyone wanting to do that would have to go back to that commission. Yeah. What was the second one, Dan? I didn't. Oh, that if they wanted to pave it, that they would have to go back to Inland Wetlands Commission for that. They'd approval. have to go back for a revision or a new permit, whatever. However, that was treated. Where does that show up? I mean, if somebody was going to buy that lot, like how would that happen? That would just show up someplace, right? I mean, it's in there. It'll be in their yeah. building file. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll be frank. It's not a easy condition to 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 to, to keep it enforced over exactly. time. Yeah. I mean, over time, yeah, that's a that's a kind of a zoning issue, but that's one of the one of the functions that I think the land use will be taking on is as part of their observation of that piece that's being transferred to them, they're also going to be looking at what's going on around that piece that would, would not be conforming to these drawings. That paving of the driveway would be one of them. Yeah, and we would or get any a other activity for that matter that was not approved with the subdivision. Yeah, we would get a driveway permit to pave. So if it's in the same spot and it's paved to pave, we, we don't do much research, but if it was gravel to pavement, we would, we would look through the building file to try to verify that. The, the only part of that driveway that would be paved is the uh, curb, cap, curb cut portion. That is a town ordinance requirement, but that is, I think, 20 or 25 feet in from the road, and then, then it's all gravel. I, I, know we had the, I know we had one outstanding question on Lot 7. The, oh, yes. the, the front yard setback? The, uh, well, the, not the front yard setback. Well, that well, and the, yeah, the, yeah. the minimum square. Yeah. Um, one of the comments that the town engineer originally had in, in his memo was he was questioning the, um, the compliance with the, uh, the minimum square on lot number seven because for some reason he thought when looking at another part of the regulation somewhere that the uh, minimum rectangle was, was supposed to... to uh, touch the front setback line, but he was on the impression that the front setback line had to be at the street, where it never really, it never says that anywhere in the zoning regulations. It says all, all the uh, minimum uh, square has to do is touch a front building setback line. That's all it says. And when you have, not only when you have interior lots, when you have lots like this where the, the lot meets the zoning criteria for frontage and things like that, but we get w a ways back from the road before for the lot opens and opens up to meet your minimum with minimum square, which is the 150 by 200 feet. And at that point, then your setback lines are applied appropriately. And there is a front setback line for that back part of the property. Yeah, that's, where the, that's where the minimum, minimum square. Carolyn, I think you had brought that up, so that's why me and Frank, uh, I went back and, and looked through the regs, um, and I, I, I concur with, with his, his assessment that the front yard setback line does run, oh, is that lot eight right in front of lot seven, Frank? Yeah, lot eight is, the, is yeah. out in front. It's the, it's the rear lot of eight in the front, front portion of seven. Yeah, so it does, so it does conform to our regs. If, if we had a purely street line setback, which I've had in towns before, it would not. But that, that's how the, the front yard setback in Portland has been interpreted since I've been here. Uh, it's been interpreted for quite a long time. Yeah. I mean, this is not that unusual. I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but... Um, this is how how the, the zoning professionals apply the, you know, where the setback lines, the front, the side, the rear setback lines, where they're formed, and it all revolves around the, the section of the lot that must meet your minimum, well, minimum width and minimum depth criteria, and that's where they look. I move on to the next one. Here. We kind of jumped. We've jumped over the uh, conservation easement. <coughs> this is the other drawing that you have, and this was covered at your, your last hearing. Um, there are a number of questions about uh, the watersheds and the, and the water you know, on and off of this property. 
and that was covered at your last hearing. When you look at this drawing, the, the area outlined to the right, that kind of triangular area, that is the area that's off this property, but the water, the water that sheds from that area flows across lot seven and eight as it flows toward that wetland and then eventually across uh, Stephen Tom Road. This is what showed up in the, uh, the drainage report uh, and that's why I copied that out because there were a lot of issues brought up, questions at the, uh, at the wetlands uh, meeting as well about water and drainage and all this water coming from off the property. A lot of the issues on the subdivision are, are not created by the subdivision, they're created by this offsite area that sheds that's a, a large watershed shedding across the subdivision. And it uh, only affects a lot seven and eight uh, because that water basically terminates at the, at the wetland, uh, at which then directs it to down and across uh, Stephen Tom Road. The other, part of the, the other part of the subdivision is not affected by that. Uh, and the other part of the subdivision has little, very little offsite uh, runoff uh, reaching it. <clears throat> Can you just refresh our, my memory anyway with regard to there were detention ponds or something uh, that you, were you can't healthy? You can't see it too well on that. It's on, it's on the site plan. I'll show you on the site plan. All right, here, here is the drawing. Uh, sheet, I think that's sheet number three of the site plan. Uh, this is the sheet that has that detention basin on it. Uh, and that, um, that was a focus of a number of comments from, from your town engineer. Uh, all that information was uh, revised and resubmitted to the town engineer, which he, uh, he then accepted as, uh, uh, as suitable for what, what had been resubmitted. It also was done before the last public hearing of wetlands. Wetlands saw these changes uh, at their last public hearing as well. So we, uh, we received a lot of pictures of the road uh, after uh, rain events mm -hmm. and, and saw water on the road. And, and understandably, that's happening before anything is there, right. obviously. Um, and what I understood from the way you explained it the last at the last meeting is the type of drainage that you're going to be installing as a result of the subdivision, all of the infrastructure for that, it's going to eliminate that water situation going across the road? Not going across the road, no. It, it basically reduces the amount of water r reaching the road culvert, but the road culvert is, is on capacity is, is relatively small compared to the, the rainfall events that we need to analyze. Uh, I have to analyze the runoff from that whole watershed for a 100-year event. Um, the, the total discharge to that culvert is being maintained uh, as it is today without any development as a result of that basin. But even that will overtop the road because the culvert there is, is, does, not have the, does not have the capacity to pass any large storm, so it will continue to, to flood over the road. It's just that we have not increased the, the impact by, because I'm maintaining the same 100-year event crossing that, uh, or going into that culvert than what currently goes there now. So, it's so not we, have, to get we have not <laughs> added to it. It's we, not gonna get worse? No, it's not well, gonna get better. it won't get any better. No, it won't get any worse, but <laughs> it's still, the, because of the culvert size and capacity, uh, that road overtops in, in large, event, large rainfall events. And that, it's primarily because not because of this subdivision, it's, be, it's a result of this large, uh, when you look at your drawing to the, the, to the right, that large off-site watershed is, is the major contributor to that. It's not the subdivision. And there's nothing we can do, there's no control over that. I thought you said you were gonna increase or do something with the culvert. Uh, yes, we were, uh, the only thing we're changing was the, the inlet pipe that uh, the water flows through before it gets to the catch basins in the road. That, was, that pipe was smaller than the pipes in the road. But what I did is uh, we agreed to enlarge and re replace that pipe 
Now it was it's a 15 inch now we we're going to put it in a 24. So that pipe no no longer was a restriction. Right now it's a restriction to the water getting into the the, the road culvert. Uh, and that's part of the reason why the, why the the, you know, the water floods floods over the over the road. I've removed that restriction, but I, I s it still have the restriction in the road culvert itself that I, that we can't can't alter. It will still flood over the uh, over the road. Maybe not quite as much because that inlet pipe is now much larger. So the full capacity of the road culvert will be utilized where right now it can't be because because that pipe, the inlet pipe is smaller than, than the culvert itself, so. Uh, it doesn't change the amount of water going through that or under or over the road, but it may help to reduce the, the flooding over the road a little bit. Not, a, not for the major storms, though. The major storms are just too much for that whole system. So this may... And again, this is a result of that it's about it's about 13 acres of offsite watershed that are right. the major contributors to that so flow. So how wet will lot seven and lot eight get? Uh, th 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 as, as wet as they get now from the water running across them from that that area. Uh, those lots are not that wet uh, when you soil test them and monitor them. Uh, the, the, that area just basically sheet flows f from the uphill property across lot seven and eight into the wetland. Uh, you go out there and look at that. There's no real major evidence of any. There's no <coughs> channel. There's no channel erosion or anything like that. It's all sheet flow. And once those two lots are developed, it will continue to be that way. So the, the lots that um, feed directly into the, col is it the it's culvert. Yes. Are um, seven and eight. Um, seven and eight, and then on the other side of the wetland. Uh, and then there's several lots on the other side with the long drive. And then five and six, pretty much. Pretty right? much, yeah. Because the other ones sort of look like they're. There's a whole other part of the, of the subdivision that discharges the Penfield Hill Road. That goes the other yeah, way. Yeah. That was the reason for the detention basin. In part, was those several lots, that which are the two interior lots, which have these long paved driveways. Uh, the amount of flow and impervious surface area was significant enough to require a detention basin in that that side of the ba that side of the watershed, that side of the wetlands, right. not the not the other side, but the side where these ba where these driveways were. And that basin uh, took care of all that water from those lots around the <coughs> around the interior lots and out front. But in addition, the basin was large enough to. Uh, to offset some of the flow coming off of the other side of the subdivision so that uh, when you look at the, the stormwater analysis, the, uh, the pre and post development flows, pre development, post development uh, that are reaching this culvert don't change. They're not, they don't increase because of that detention basin. Doesn't change the capacity and the ability of that culvert to, to pass large flows. Right. But as far as the regulations and our responsibility is that we, d we do not increase the water reaching that culvert. So, so lot six is, is um, draining directly into the basin. Uh, yeah, five, it's, uh, it's these, there's three lots here. Uh, four, five, six, and th there's four lots here. The two interior lots and these two front lots. Those all basically are in the watershed of that Tension basin. Okay, um, I just because that's a blow up of that. So this, this right here is the detention basin. Oh yes. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Okay. I just. It's a hatched area on the. Uh, okay. okay. On your colored up. Conservation. Uh, I, I guess why I'm asking because I, I, my concern is about um, a lot of pests. If if water is um, sheet flows over lot seven and eight, um, then any pesticide use is going to go directly into the culvert, which is on the other side, pesticide use would go into the catch basin, right? Because uh, water would flow off of that lot into the catch basin. Is well, that when correct? you say the catch basin and the roll culvert are one and the same. Okay, what, what is, 
what is oh that the, you're talking about the detention basin the detention basin mm. okay sorry. Uh, yes that that type of material would uh, if there was any would basically be, pass through the detention basin and would discharge the outlet pipe for the detention basin here's uh, there's Steve and Tom Road and that culvert crossing is right there the pipe coming out of that detention basin discharges right here so it's literally you know right next to almost next to the culvert but again it does not it would not prevent uh, anything like that from from passing, from passing into the into into the well and, and through the culvert Just refresh my memory. The the driveway for lot seven was going to stay gravel. Is that what you're saying? Seven and eight. And eight. Yeah, you really can't see it on that drawing too well, but you see the lots seven and eight, but the driveway is associated with them. Oh, I can, yeah, you I'm can see them. Oh, yeah, they're there. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because of the proximity to the wetland. Okay. Um, they originally were proposed as pavement. Um, began to be conservative because of the computation for an impervious area. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure I included any possibilities of anything that was going to be impervious. But n no, n not the same considerations for four and. No, no. Those driveways are uh, somewhat more separate, separated from the wetland and those. And and the driveways for the um, interior lots have to be paved because they're they're accepting a lot of a lot of runoff and they could not be gravel they have they have to be paved plus the slopes your slope requirements for paved driveways all that stuff kicks in there any other questions i'll move on those are those are the primary changes um, that you see the 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 conservation easement and the conveyance of those areas and that detention basin was was enlarged and, and modified a little bit uh, to respond to Jeff Jacobson's comments uh, and once I went back and went redid the analysis I discovered that the uh, because the basin was increased a little bit uh, the flows coming off the site at that road culvert were reduced enough to, to, to be the same as what currently cross the culvert now, cross the road sometimes, but yeah. Uh, we, we talked, I know somebody mentioned blasting uh, at the last meeting. Uh, yes. What, can you just? Uh, a couple of the foundations for some of these lots on, the, on this side, for instance, this lot right here, which is, that's, that's lot number th three. We know this. There's shallow bedrock there. You can see it. You can see it from the road. It sticks out of the road. So that that house foundation is going to require a blasting, and there's a there's a permit in the fire marshal process for any blasting um, that goes on, and that has you have to go through that permit process for that. I'm not sure how much blasting is involved. Uh, there is ledge there. Sometimes the ledge is is a type and fractured enough that heavy machinery can can pull it up, but you, we won't know that until you actually. Uh, Open that up, open that lot up, and see what's there. And you have the you have that potential um, <coughs> in one of the interior lots, way way in the back there. Uh, there's shell ledge there, but that's uh, that's kind of separated from everything. But again, any any blasting that's done uh, requires a uh, permit from the fire marshal's office. There are certain procedures and requirements for any blasting that uh, the developer has to go through. For that permit, yeah, and there's certain times of year, right? There's all the kinds of yeah, 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 all kinds of requirements. Yeah. And <coughs> any issues with the? Did, did we talk about the water table or any issues? Uh, no, uh, there really isn't much water table uh, on these lots. The soils were very well drained because of the uh, 
because most of the most of the subdivision has very little watershed associated with it, other than the, the <coughs> lots themselves. So the, the, the water tables were not that bad. Any water table was picked up with the soil testing that we did for the uh, the health department for the septic systems, um, and those are very typical. And some of them were, were not very shallow. So there's there's not a water there's no real water table issues. There's there's surface water issues obviously on the other side on the eastern side of the subdivision, but that's that's something that just passes passes through the lot. It's it's that's not the groundwater. There is groundwater on those on those two sides where curtain drains might be required, you know, for the septic systems, uh, lots seven and eight. Um, but again, that's that's not unusual uh, in a lot of a lot of parts of town. And foundation drains. Every every house in the subdivision would have to have foundation drain. That's a uh, that's a building code requirement, whether you need it or not. Uh, this this is the. Uh, the southern portion of the of the subdivision, the back of the uh, interior lots, you hear there's your uh, there's your uh, wetland and, and area that's being conveyed to the land trust in the corner there. Uh, here's the one side of that large wetland uh, that is part of lot. Uh, or it was part of lot five. Um, and here's your uh, here's your land trust uh, parcel right. Right there. And this is the site plan for lots seven and eight. Where you can see the green hatch mark there is the uh, is the, the eastern side of that uh, that wetland. Has any further questions? Further Happy questions to? by uh, any commission members? There was one um, comment about um, on lot one at the temporary topsoil stockpile being moved. That was moved, yes. That was moved. Yeah. We moved all there's some minor comments about the proximity to wetlands and things yeah. like that. All those things were all moved all of, okay. from, from that original memo, yes. Things that were that slightly that. encroaching into the 100-foot uh, <coughs> upland regulated area for wetlands, yeah. all those things were, were moved out of that area. Okay. That's all of this. Any further questions or comments? Okay, this is a public hearing, so if any members of the public would like to speak, um, Please feel free to do so. Approach the podium, identify yourself, and just a reminder that all questions or comments need to be addressed through the commission. So if anyone, any member of the public would like to speak on this topic, we'll survey the room first. And I'm seeing no one in the room. Oh, yes, sir. Please. If you would, uh, yeah, uh, approach the podium and identify yourself. Name and address, please. Hi, uh, Jay Asakon in 405, Pen 405 Penfield Hill Road. Um, we're one of the abutters to, uh, Frank, the, uh, to Lot 1. Okay, yeah, I, I know, um, you know, the, the zoning commission lives in the in the realm of, of codes and and I, I you know I I'm pretty sure that 
you know, all the dimensions here and, and what's drawn out for you uh, meet those codes. I would argue, though, that it's not a particularly environmentally respons responsible design. Uh, we've got things like the, the two interior lots with very, very long driveways. I mean, there's an opportunity here to make that one driveway, two driveways that's double the clearing, double the pavement, double the runoff, double the environmental impact, and you need a, a larger detention basin. You know, I realize it may, it, it may meet code, but at what point does the environment get some priority? You know, I, I just, just something to think about. I don't expect an answer, but it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do to me. Um, the other part that was not mentioned, I don't know if it's in your file, but on lot one, uh, I submitted pictures to the Wetlands Commission. There is standing water on that lot for several months out of the year. It's not there yet because we've had such a dry year, but it is, uh, it's, it'll be there uh, probably later this month, maybe January. It's usually there for about four months out of the year. Now, Wetlands looked at that. They brought the, uh, the soil scientist out there. They said it doesn't meet Wetlands uh, classifications, doesn't have um, this, the, the wetland soil type. Uh, that may be true, but at the same time here we have a, a house sitting on it that, that says it's going to have a basement. So how does that work? Maybe, maybe it passes wetlands, but you know, <laughs> at what point is that a, a, an environmentally responsible design? Not just that, but the people who live in that house, they're going to have a wet basement. So um, you know, I, I, th there's opportunities here, and, and, and I just urge you to, I don't know, take what leeway you have to, to consider environmentally responsible designs in, in, in the approach here. Um, I know, you know, that there's attributes of that in the, the plan of conservation and development, uh, but my, my experience, uh, both as a former Wetlands Commission member and um, you know, member of the participating public, you know, I, I see the commissions, you know, with their their own rules and their own lines of authority. Um, sometimes there's, there's there's areas of that that just don't overlap, and this these these projects just don't get a, a holistic view. You know, one commission takes care of their piece, another commission takes care of their piece, but in the in the big picture, there there's opportunities we're missing. And this is an environmentally sensitive area. That, there's no doubt about it. You know, th this, if you walk that property, it is, you know, maybe it was uh, uh, agricultural years and years ago, but right now it's, it's pretty much pristine forest. It is, it's a, it's a wildlife corridor. Uh, I just, uh, you know, we're, we're just, I don't think any of the neighbors we've talked to, uh, you know, have any, um, any, any hopes of, of nothing happening here. We just want to see good decisions made. Uh, I know the Olsons uh, long, lived there for a long time. Uh, I know they, they kept it the way it was because they love that. Uh, they love the community and, and the look and feel of, of, of the neighborhood. I just don't want to see that go away uh, because, um, you know, this plan was drawn up uh, the way it was. That's up. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask Frank a question about that? Yes. Um, Frank, uh, about the two, the merging the two driveways into one, um, would you comment on that? Um, yes. Um, typically, the experience for quite a while now between builders and particularly realtors and, and future homeowners. Uh, common driveways have become a real pariah for homeowners because when you get two homeowners sharing a, a structure like a driveway uh, and one of them becomes a problem, the other one has to pick up, pick up the, the slack and there's all kinds of beefs, all kinds of horror stories resulting from that. Um, and as I said most, uh, most people do not want shared driveways, not long single shared driveways. Are those the two gravel driveways? No, those no. Are those are on the these are on the other side the of the other, si other side of the wetland. Okay. Those are the driveways to the two interior lots. Um, 
if those driveways you know, were to try to be combined, <clears throat> right now the, the driveways are only 12 feet wide. A 12-foot driveway does not accommodate more than a single family, one house. If I were to merge those, I would have a 24-foot wide driveway to have two-way traffic on a long driveway like that. That's no different than what I've got there now. I have two individual 12-foot driveways. A common driveway would have to be, you know, twice that to accommodate vehicles moving in, in either direction. So really, <coughs> it's, it's six one half dozen the other. The common the common driveway part is really a, uh, a very um, unacceptable alternative to so many people, homeowners, realtors, builders, you know, across the board. Uh, do you have plantings in between the two driveways? On the uh, no. Uh, there could be, but there's not a lot of space between them. Uh, there, were, there could be lawn that they may choose to plant something or let something grow up. They could even, they probably could even plant the trees if they wanted to, but the driveways are, are relatively are relatively close. Uh, the only the only criteria for that that you have is is uh, street trees. There's no criteria for anywhere it's anywhere else on the lot. Relative to the interior lots, you do have that 20, 20 foot wide um, evergreen planting buffer, which is supposed to be, uh, which is shown along the rear of any any lots that are in front of the interior lots. That is that is the only other planting requirement that you have for the subdivision. That's not to say that homeowners wouldn't do something, but you know, as far as your regulations, there's there's nothing to address that. Did we talk about how the uh, construction would occur in terms of lot clearing? And, and you just mentioned that there's a buffer that's required between a, you know, well, it's shown on here, there's a, a buffer between the existing front lot and the proposed, one proposed rear lot. But um, could these potentially be all cleared or what would happen? Uh, they shouldn't be. The lots are, are quite large. I mean, it's not necessary to, to clear that, those entire lots. Some of the, some of the lots are close to, to minimum size, and most of that would be cleared. But those, uh, several of those lots are you know, quite big uh, and would not, would not need to be cleared. Of course, you can never control in any, any parcel, in any building lot. You, you really can't control how much clearing is done and you know, how many trees are cut down. How, how big an area that, that property owner wants to develop? I thought, um, Dan, I'm not sure whether you were around for this, and maybe I'm hallucinating, but I remember a subdivision on the corner of, it was Penfield, and uh, um, it has the old house on it. Yeah, five-lot subdivision. Right. Yeah, yeah. And w weren't there some limits to what could be cut down? I'd have to go back and look. I know with that subdivision, because I sealed one of those houses, that they, they did have street tree requirements. Yes. Um, and, they, and they had other requirements. I, I'm I'd have sure. to go back and look at that approval to yeah. give you a good answer, yeah. which I certainly could do if you, if you want and report well, back I to mean, you. I, you know, to say, well, some of these lots are close to minimum size, okay, so, you know, a couple of them are around a little over one acre, but to say, well, you know, that they could all, you know, they could all be clear, that's a lot of clearing. You know, yes. you know an acre, I mean, I live on less than half, half an acre. And yeah, I guess generally, um, unless it's a tree in the Upland Review area, we don't really regulate um, people cutting down trees in their, on their property. Yeah. Can you just look at that? Sure. That just to see what was in there because yeah. I, I kind of remember that there was something in there. Okay. Unless that was something that was imposed by the developer himself. But again, that then becomes a zoning enforcement issue that who's there to, to monitor what trees are being cut down and how much and. Right, but you, you've seen how some developers, it's easy for them. It's, it's a lot easier for them to just come in and just cut it all down, right? Uh, that, that usually depends on the on the property owner. Property owner wants to save trees. The the developer doesn't. Uh, the builder doesn't cut them down. The the the, the builder only does what the, the property owner instructs them to do. Okay. 
we do show we do show limits of disturbance on there for purposes of of wetlands and things like that but you know those those limits are you know not not tight uh, it does give some leeway to the to the use of the property other than the uh, the house and septic system especially when you get into bigger lots those two large interior lots um, somebody's going to want to use those lots so the um I think when I had the lot number, I had the acreage for the lot numbers before, they included the conservation numbers, right? Mm -hmm. But now they don't anymore. So I have to just kind of. Well, do the, that. the conservation easement areas um, were not part of the, well, with the exception of that large wetland, that was part of a lot five, five I believe. Right, yeah, that yeah. was owned entirely by lot five. Right because that was included in the area for Lot 5. That now will come out, that area comes out of Lot 5. So Lot 5 is now, I'm, I don't know what it is anymore. Because uh, I'd have to look at okay. it. Was, well, it's quite sizable because it takes, not only does it take the interior lot, but it also takes that entire well in. Okay, well, it's Lot, yeah. So. But the rest of them really don't change that much, Frank? Uh, the property lines are not changing, no. Mm -hmm. Because the- A little um, bit. The, the easements, any, anything that's an easement does not alter the property line. It's okay. an easement. Yeah. And what's being conveyed to the land trust uh, is primarily what was originally proposed as an easement. But it was its own, it was defined within its own boundary. And so I guess I just would like you to comment on the standing water for four months yes yes um, that had been looked at a, a number of times it's not a wetland it it basically is a, a small puddle area that accumulates after heavy rainstorms uh, it does disappear uh, we've seen photographs of the, the area uh, with ice there of course anything water that flows in there and then freezes is going to be there for a long time it's not water anymore it's ice um, that area tends to drain relatively quickly because it's not a well in it, the soils there are, are well drained. It's a, f it's a function of the contour. The contour around that area creates, creates a depression there. Uh, and that area on lot, I think it's lot number one, uh, that lot will probably be graded to eliminate that, that puddle because that's what it is. Uh, in order to accommodate the, the drainage and the runoff on lot one, that area is gonna be graded and leveled off so that puddle is not going to exist anymore. And relative to the comment about wet basements, every house in that part of town has the potential of having a wet basement if they don't have a drain. All these houses will have full footing and basement drains, uh, acknowledging that at some point in the, in the season you're gonna have a water table that may, may be higher than your basement floor, so building code requires uh, footing drains for all houses, whether they think you need it or not. And if you look at the the the, the house location elevation on lot number one, it is it is set up a, a little bit high uh, because of the uh, because of the need to be able to to drain that basement. I mean, in in response to the question about environmentally sensitive. That's an issue that really w I would have expected to come up through the Wetlands Commission. Um, that is the commission that really looks at those kind of things. Uh, your zoning and subdivision regulations are what address other things. And um, this, these, these lots in this subdivision has not been built to the minimum standard of the lot sizes. By your, by your own regulation, by your density calculation, I would have been allowed to put 10 lots on this subdivision. I chose not to. I chose not to try and squeeze that much on, onto that site. And most of these lots, almost all of them, are more than the minimum acreage requirement. Any of them by say, several acres. So I mean, th that that was a consideration that the, the owner was looking at, not trying to, you know, squeeze too much on there, but also, you know, to have a, a reasonable, to return and reasonable development of the parcel. One of the things that we asked, that there was a, a, an approval that we give on um, Ames Hollow Road. 
um, where the lots, the water um, uh, sheeted over the lots and flowed down into a culvert. And we asked that um, they not use pesticides on the lawn. And, and that was part of our approval. And um, I, I'd like to see that here as well. I mean, that, that, that can, could be added into the conditions of, of this commission if you so, so desire. Okay. Were there any uh, requirements or suggestions from the, from the water people or the? And then Wetlands Commission? Yeah, in the, the only two uh, conditions that I thought were applicable enough to bring over to your, um, your approval was that the seven and eight stay gravel. That was it. That was it. Most of it, all the other, uh, all the other language was kind of the boilerplate. Inland wet when Inland Wetlands Commission approval for subdivisions. Well, they didn't mention anything um, on those thoughts either about that. <coughs> um, but but I but I, I feel it, that it, you know if it's not that hard to do to protect the water as much as we can, and so to me that is kind of an important point when you have so much water mm -hmm. congregating and, and she, like Frank said, sheep flowing mm -hmm. over these, mm -hmm. these yeah. lots and... Um, and if it is going to be all one, I mean, that really, that's a lot of material. <coughs> yeah, it's a lot of material. Mm -hmm. and, and, you Potentially know, a lot of material. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Salt and all kinds of things, but you can't really regulate that because people are going to put salt on their driveway, but or sand. But pesticides are something that we've done in the past, mm -hmm. and I, I personally would like to see that happen again here. I, I, I mean, I can certainly add that if you guys would like to the the motion we have. Um, I don't know. And I didn't mean to cut you off, Bob. I, no, go ahead. Okay, and I I, I just don't know. If, if Chantel's question wants to be answered first on the five lot subdivision before you vote, uh, you know, before you close. Um, so I had the same, so same thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so once we're done with public questions and comments, we'll come back to that, I guess, and decide what the next step would be. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, <coughs> questions for Frank while he has the floor. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Uh, just a quick response to something that uh, Dan had, had just mentioned. Your regulations do not address that question about the amount of clearing allowed on a lot. Um, basically, you, you, you dictate the lot size and lot areas and this and that, but there's nothing in your regulations that you have to take for guidance to set a uh, maximum coverage or maximum disturbance of a lot. I don't know how you would do that. Yes, I would generally agree with Frank, but um, outside you know, of any uh, regulatory, uh, right? I would, if if I have a commissioner who has a question, um, that would allow them to make a uh, a more confident, sound decision as to you know how they want to vote. Then I'm I'm happy to to look into that, especially if we have clock left. So it it's really up to the board if they want me to look into that or not. I just I just point that out. There's no regulatory basis for that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you, but if this is something they want me to, to look into, I, I, I don't have an issue with that. Okay, thank you, Frank. Um, any other questions or comments from members of the public here in the room? Yes, sir. If you would please identify yourself. system which is going to add more water to the situation 
Is there any consideration on um, possibly the tree clearing? Because the wetlands, the way it's designed now, after the lots around the surrounding area are cleared, that's bringing sunlight, that's going to bring new growth, and the wetlands are going to completely change to what is how it's designed right now. With all the stones and rocks that are there, the way that it's designed as a sponge to absorb everything, that's going to be gone as soon as all that sunlight comes in. I don't know. I mean, property owner owners are going to do what they want to do, but if there's less homes there, then there's less situations you have to deal with for the excess water, for the fertile fertilizing the lawn, the water runoff, people cutting trees, maybe they want to keep more trees, I don't know. But I just think being near the wetlands, you're, there's so much involved in that tight little area. There's no other development in that area around any other wetlands with those many homes that close with all the extra water runoff. So as uh, the gentleman was speaking before, I understand with the driveway, if you share the driveway, but if you have only one lot, then now it's only one driveway. Now you don't have 24 feet wide driveway, it's only the 12. So maybe you can downsize some of the housing that's in this area to consider for the wetlands being so close. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room would like to speak? Okay, anyone on chat online would like to make a comment? No. Okay, we have nothing online in chat then. So I guess now as a commission, we should um, discuss, do we want to wait on uh, Dan's research regarding tree cutting? Oh, I'm sorry. Frank, would you like I'm sorry, just now, if there's going to be any questions. Oh, okay. uh, Dan, have you checked on, on time wise? I know I gave you the extension. Yeah, that's why I was looking at my phone. Uh, we opened November 3rd. So How if far you, out does that, does that first extension take us? Uh, so, I mean, we had 35 days to close, and we have another 65 days of extensions. So, I think we're, we're, we could do two meetings in January if we wanted to. Okay. And that would also not eat into the clock for, for closing. That would just be our extension. So we could even close in January and then still have more information yeah, brought back to yeah, the board. Yeah, once you February. close, then you got another 65 days. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they have 65 days to render a decision. Okay. Uh, before the, the commission, I don't know if you, if you plan on tabling this. It sounds like you are. Um, that's fine. I just want to comment on, on you know, a couple of the neighbors who live next to the subdivision. Uh, keep bringing up issues which are really where were the purview of the wetland and still are. The Wetlands Commission did not take issue with any of these things that the, they've been brought up here as far as environmental or too many houses or too many driveways. The Wetland Commission did not, and that is really what's within their purview. Um, this commission has zoning regulations, has subdivision regulations, which you are bound to uphold and which I'm bound to, you know, comply with. Um, and those kind of things that most of the neighbors are, are complaining about don't really fall under your zoning and subdivision regulations. They fall more into the wetland purview, and um, the Wetlands Commission was not as uh, as concerned uh, as the neighbors would you know would like you to believe. They made no stipulation relative to anything other than the the, the, the gravel driveways for seven and eight. Is there, um, would, would there be any way of um, a com uh, making the, the exit pipe large enough so that maybe you could help solve the problem even though it's not you're, not, you're not increasing the flow of water over the road um, and, and that's not something that you're, you're causing to happen, but is there any action that is is uh, reasonable that maybe you could in this plan help correct that problem even though it's not really your problem is that something that, it, it, that you know 
Well, again, that's why the uh, that's why the the owner and I basically suggested it that um, that inlet pipe to the the culvert under the road be increased so that is not a restriction anymore. That was part of the problem why the water may have gone over the road more frequently um, because the the water just could not get into that 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 culvert system. Uh, with that inlet pipe now larger than the culvert, that that is no longer a restriction. Now the full capacity of the culverts can be utilized. But even then, um, the replacement for that culvert system to pass all events, first of all, would, would be unreasonable because in, the, in all the design standards, the town standards, um, the design criteria for that road would be a 25-year event, which would, you know, which wouldn't be that large, I and mean, it's still over top of the road in, in larger events. Um, we've got, we've, I've, I've done a good job in, in holding down and controlling the runoff from the site, so not to have any impact on that culvert system. And by, you know, that combination of that and, and increasing the inlet pipe size is, you know, to alleviate a lot of the smaller flooding issues. But to put in a, a system would be a rather rather large culvert system uh, would involve easements and property owners on either side and uh, just not something that uh, this this owner you know could do or it would would be obligated and I'm not sure what public works would say about it they ultimately have you know and they have never made comment of that nature on the subdivision neither the public works or the town engineer there are just those types of things, you know, under, yeah. under larger storm events, you do have, you know, sheet flowing across the road. That's not the only place in town. There's a lot of places that do that. So, thoughts, commission members, on either moving forward with a motion tonight or waiting for Dan's research on the tree cutting question? Yes, I wouldn't mind having a refresher and seeing what we did on that other one. Yeah, whatever you guys want to do. Okay, consensus. Well, I guess we we one thing we would have to, as long Frank would have to agree to an extension. I mean, we could close and then I could still come back to it, but I, I think it would be better to leave the public hearing open um, and get you that information under an open public hearing. Um, so yeah, we would have to have the applicant agree to to an extension to the January fifth meeting. I want to say, um, but if not, we could close, and I could still bring you back that information. If not, so is that something Frank would have to go back to the applicant and, and ask? Well, I think I think Frank most likely has the uh, authority to. I have, I have that authority. Yeah. Okay. Your thoughts. Uh, if the commission is seriously thinking about that, I, I understand the concern. As, but I'll, I'm say, I'll say again, whatever happened on that subdivision may be unique to that subdivision. It may be unique to the developer and the owner. You have no regulatory standard of any sort for this. So I don't know how, you, how you're going to come up with a, any kind of standard or suggestion or requirement for this subdivision when it's not a, has never been applied before and, yeah, you, and it, you don't again I don't necessarily disagree with you Frank it's just it's a question that's out there I don't have the specifics of that five lot okay. subdivision off the top of well, my then head I, so. I would prefer that the public hearing be, be left open then okay. just, just so I have the ability to, to uh, yeah and that's what I that's why I thought but yeah I very well may come back with no this does this is this is this is what transpired this doesn't apply um, you know, I'm not, I don't want to make you feel like I'm going to. No, 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 I just, just, just the I thought I'd rather have the public open, the public hearing open. Can I just say, I'm just going based on my memory and I'm thinking of, I'm thinking that it was more of a, um, uh, it's just a condition, you know, like a condition. It's not yeah, a regulatory I'll go, thing. It's just a condition to say that you wouldn't clear the whole you know, it wouldn't clear the entire lot. The lot. That's yeah, so. I mean, that's not a, that's just a condition, right? Right. I yeah. mean, you could apply a condition. 
Yeah, I mean. Just like the pesticide. That's a condition. You can apply a condition. So. Yeah, so, so let, me, let me get the information. Okay. See how you guys feel about what I come back with. And if, the, if you feel strongly based on what I say, you know, one way or the other, um, may, maybe at that point I'll seek, I'll seek legal counsel. But, but let's just get the information. Well, if we do something like that, yeah, I got to make sure it's, okay. it's good. So let me look into it, get you back the information, and then you can, you can make your, your decision from there. And then if you need more information, we have time for that. Okay. Yeah. I, I have one question. Is there anything that you need from me relative to a discussion today or between now and the next year? I mean, I've, we've, we've gone over this stuff pretty, uh, in, pretty intensely. You know, I have a question, and I probably have no business asking this question, but I'm going to ask it because it's in my head. <laughs> have the neighbors talked with uh, the owner or the applicant, the, all the neighbors? To not, that, not that I'm aware to of. To have they? a discussion about their concerns? and No. I'm just, you know... I mean that, that all of that is being aired with I, these commissions. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, it depends on how well you know your neighbors and Well, like that, the Olsons don't live there. Okay. They, oh, they, they haven't live lived there yet. now for a few years. Okay. But, but do they live in town no. or nearby? No. no. Okay. But that should not prohibit communication. No, but again, they're not, they're not neighbors here. They're, they're, you know, they're in another part of the state now. Yeah, as n nice as that would be um, yeah. to have something like that, there's yeah. no requirement right. for no, I know them that, to do that. But I just was curious. Like I said, I probably have no business asking the question. But. I, I'm basically that sounding board for the, for the owner. Uh, I was the person who <coughs> got in the middle of this, the conservation easement and the conveyances. I met with, uh, with John Lachane you know, privately about what he was looking for and what his idea was. And then I bounced that off the owner and I went back and forth and that was the agreement that uh, both both sides were, were comfortable with. Yeah, well the reason I asked that is because it sounded like they were very, when they did live there, they liked the lay of the land and the wildlife and that whole type of environment, so um, you know, maybe maybe there could be some kind of communication. You know, yeah, I, I don't think that's a realistic approach uh, to I anything like this. Yeah. Yeah. If it was, he wouldn't have applied for subdivision to begin with. Well, maybe a smaller. You know. I'm, no. I'm no. just. <laughs> I'm just. You know. No, I I, I feel the same way. Yeah. So I'm glad that you said something. Okay, can anybody else think of uh, anything we want Frank to take away for our, our next meeting? I'll, I'll wait to hear from Dan, then I'll, I'll, I'll need to write something up. When, well, I don't, I don't think you need, oh yeah, you just need to send me an email for the extension. For the extension yeah. to the to Yeah, the, just uh, like January. last time. Yeah, and I'll do the rest of the footwork, and I, I'll get back to you if something comes up that I think warrants your attention. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, it, I'd, I'd be, if it comes I'd be back curious to as to the background there, what, <coughs> what was, you know, what the condition. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to go through that with you once I pull the file. Yeah, whether, whether that's something that's workable or might be applied here, but like uh, I said, you have no regulatory standard for it, so I'm kind of right, yeah, so about that. I'm taking this cautiously, Frank. Um, are you available between Christmas and New Year's, or are you going to be away? Um, I should be Okay. Because that ideally, that's when I I'd, I'd, I'd have a lot of availability to talk if, to you. If if not, I'd be available either by email or phone. If, okay. If I yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll reach out to you. Thank you. Thank you. So, do we need a motion? Dan? Yeah, I have a motion to continue. Okay, I'll read this one. Motion to continue public hearing for application twenty-two dash zero six Penfield Hill Road and Stephen Tom, Tom Road, proposed a lot resubdivision with wetlands on site. Application and property of Robert W. Wilson, map 61, lot 14, zone RR. May I have a second, please? Second. Um, okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion to continue the public hearing is approved. Okay, then we'll move on to our next um, 
public hearing, which is application 22-10, 311 Brownstone Avenue, request for special permit modification to change approved storage building to public bathrooms and welcome center with small studio living unit, new pump out station to be installed on site to allow for full service campground from current use of semi-primitive application and property of Dean and Darlene Susi, map 28, spot 54, zone B3, riverfront overlay zone. So the public hearing for this application remains open from our um, previous meeting. So um, I believe, uh, did I see Dean online? Yeah, Dean is available, I believe, on Zoom. Uh, if I could, I forgot to ask you at the beginning of the meeting, if you could uh, make a motion to amend the agenda. Okay. Based on the new narrative you guys received, a new site plan, um, the second sentence in uh, on the agenda for application number 2210 uh, can be struck. Uh, the applicant is no longer proposing a new pump out station to be, to be installed on site for full service campground from current use of semi-primitive. Um, all he is proposing to do now is a modification to change the approved storage building to public bathrooms, a welcome center, and a st small studio living unit. Okay. okay, so we'll need to vote on that motion right now, right? Yes. So I make a motion to amend the wording for application 22-10 as described by Dan. May I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The uh, agenda is amended as described. So, uh, Dean, uh, I don't know if Dean has any updates or um, let's see, you, I, as I recall, Dan, you and Dean were going to work on. Um, oh, there's Dean. Hey, Dean. Yeah, so me and Dean talked and um, I heard him. Yeah. You see, De yeah. yeah. Do we see Dean Susie on there? Okay. Hey, hey Dean. Hey, <laughs> yeah. So me and Dean talked, and kind of the resolution was to 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 dump to leave the pump station out for now. <laughs> I, yeah, I know that that was good. Uh, leave the pump station out for now, and then um, you know he he you know he's got the storage building in place. He meets the regulations in every other every other way. So. Um, you know, any issue that I had is, is, is now resolved. Sorry, Dean, I, do you want to go ahead and just go through your narrative for them? Or? Um, I don't know if there's any questions that I, we, uh, basically the permit that we had approved before for the other building was basically a dwelling with, um, uh, a business as well. So this is very similar. Um, just a little bit smaller than we had before. So uh, right now, uh, I think it's pretty much forward as far as we want to do. We have the plan and everything in place. Um, so we want to have the welcome center, the uh, the uh, dwelling, and the uh, business in the building. And can we ask questions, or should we? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Go so ahead. Dean, I'm confused now. You had 48 sites. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And so, so what happened was, yeah, yeah, I'll go through that. I'll go through that to tell you what happened there. So originally when I um, applied for this paperwork, I didn't realize that I already had a previous approval for all of that. And um, I also had a, an approval. It's on file. It was dated, um, filed with the town 7-17-21. It was with the RVs in place. It was a, it was parking lots and everything else. It was all this was all done already. So um, really, um, we just when we, I should have picked that up. So I, I don't really need any approvals for that. If I was to do anything more, I would really have to do it through the health department. But that's not really what we're looking to do. Um, we're trying to just involve the building. We figured once we came into town. Uh, and for a permit that we would have added um, the dump station as well, but that's not a priority for us. Um, we don't bring in really enough people to to even bother with that. Um, it was just uh, we're happy with the tent sites, primitive sites, keeping it quiet. Um, but the building that's there now, we want to put in the bathrooms. Um, we want to uh, complete it, and I think that um, this fits the property very well. And there was some question or some, 
observation I think that uh, Jeff made about how the studio caretaker living area is supposed to be <coughs> not to exceed 800 square feet. So, so I talked to Jeff. I, I mean, if you look uh, at it and. Well, no. So I talked to Jeff about this. Yeah. This is in the B3 zone. Yeah. And uh, our regs conflict in, in this area yeah. a little bit. Uh -huh. um, and normally when regulations conflict, you, you, uh, you usually side with the, with the applicant. Um, so in the B3 zone, you're allowed to have uh, an apartment that size as long as uh, a certain percentage is commercial on the first floor, mm -hmm. and that's what me and Dean had worked out. Okay. So Jeff is citing a different part of the regs, but D Dean does meet the regulations with that, that floor plan. Okay. The one thing that we had asked him to do, which he did agree to, and I think he had already agreed to before, was that um, he had to have a full, full bath in the apartment. Uh, he couldn't they couldn't just have yeah. the public showers so they did add a shower to the bathroom um and to, to comply with what what we needed from them okay. that's correct okay questions or comments by commission members okay this is a public hearing would anybody in the room like to make a uh, comment Okay, seeing none, anybody online would like to make a comment? Nothing in chat. Nothing in chat. Okay, then. Um, oh, I did have one question. Yes. It, for the RVs, are there, are there the electrical hookups? or what Th There won't there? be RVs. Oh, there won't be at all? No. So he'd still have to have a dump station to have RVs. Okay. So at this point, I, I think it's moot to, 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 okay. to talk about that okay. part. Yeah, he would. He would have to come back. He'd have to go through health to get the dump station, and then he'd have to come to you guys to get it cited. Okay. Um, but in reviewing the the file with Dean, um, my concern was where the RVs were going to park. But his prior approval, he had submitted a site map that that was approved by this commission, that had uh, RV locations on it. Um, so really, if he ever wanted RVs, he would just need to come back for the dump station location, which isn't really a big deal. And then the rest would be worked out with the health department. Uh, okay, but my question was going to be about the power, not about the dump station. Okay, so there won't be RVs, so there won't be power. So, <laughs> so, so that that okay. should be good. Okay. Further questions? Okay, I make a motion then to close the public hearing for application 22-10. May I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Okay, the public hearing for application 22-10 is now closed. Any discussion amongst commission members? Okay, then do we have a, uh, a motion, Dan? We do. Chantel, do you want to read it? Right. Sure, go ahead, please. Uh, motion to approve application number 22-10. 311 Brownstone Avenue request for a special permit modification to change approved storage building to public bathrooms and a welcome center with small studio living unit. <coughs> Application and property of Dean and Darlene Sosi, map 28, lot 54, zone B3, riverfront overlay zone. As shown on set of plans entitled Improvement Location Survey Permit Plan Land of Dean Sosi, and Darlene Rice, Brownstone Avenue and Middlesex Avenue, Portland, Connecticut, dated 02-10-2020. Prepared by Gardner and Peterson Associates. Narrative, building layout, and based on all plans, renderings, and information submitted, testimony provided, and subject to the following instructions and conditions that are integral to this approval. One, that this approval will expire in five years. Two, that the applicant address applicable comments in the town engineer's memo dated 11 22 Three, that the applicant address the commitment, I'm sorry, comment in the memo from the fire marshal dated 11 22 Four, that three paper copies of the final revised plan and one mylar be submitted to the planning department for endorsement by an officer of the commission. The endorsed mylar shall be filed on the land records within 180 days as per ZR section 10.5.3.2.A. Five, 
than an ENS bond and site restoration bond in an amount to be determined by the town engineer be submitted prior to the endorsement of the plan if required. Six, that all ENS controls be installed and are maintained per the plan and inspected by town staff prior to any land disturbance activities if required. Seven, that any exterior light fixtures must comply with ZR section eight and must be approved by the zoning enforcement officer prior to installation. Eight, that any signage requires a signage permit and must conform to ZR section 8.4. Nine, that the certified letter of approval be placed on the revised final plan. Number 10, that the plan is subject to a final review by the town engineer. 11, that the applicant meet any requirements of the town of Portland Director of Public Works. And 12, that a zoning permit be issued prior to the start of activity associated with this approval. Reasons, the proposal conforms to section 5.1 and 10.4 of the zoning regulations. May I have a second to the motion, please? Second. Okay, we'll now vote. Victoria? Vote aye. Oh, question. Uh, yes. Uh, just a process question. I wasn't here for the opening or the original public hearing. Am I allowed to vote? Oh, did you watch it on Zoom? No, I did not. Did you? Um, no. If yeah, if you haven't reviewed the prior meetings, either in the minutes or or on on uh, YouTube, uh, you should abstain. Okay. Okay. We'll just ask you to abstain. And Victoria, you voted aye. Yes, and I and I watched. Okay. 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 Okay, we will now move on to the public hearing for application 22-13, 69 Marlboro Street, Main Street and Marlboro Street. Request for special permit modification, application and property of BRT DeMarco PPP LLC. Assessors <coughs> map 19, lot 68, zone B2. May I have a motion to open the public hearing, please? So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Okay, public hearing for application 22-13 is now open. Would someone like to speak on behalf of this application, please? Yes. Um, can we zoom in on the map like we did with the previous one? I think that would be helpful. Uh, good evening for the record. My name is Nick Yushchak, Y-U-S-C-H-A-K. I'm a registered landscape architect with CCA LLC at 40 Old New Milford Road in Brookfield, Connecticut. And uh, we're representing the applicant, BRT DeMarco, PTP LLC for the property, 69 Marlboro Street. This is an application for a special permit modification. And the um, original special permit was approved recently in uh, August of 2022. And this is a modification to the approved 
application that was approved in August of 2022. Uh, now we're responding to the specific requirements of Starbucks. And Starbucks is the future coffee shop occupant for building D. Could you move the microphone over just a little bit? There you go. So this is uh, for future occupant of Building D. This is Starbucks, and um, they have specific requirements uh, for passenger vehicle stacking at the drive-up window. And uh, these um, revisions are in response to that. Anyway, I'll go through a list of the uh, modifications that we're proposing this evening. Uh, building D footprint is uh, being relocated a little under uh, six feet to the north. Uh, this provides more passenger vehicle stacking at the Starbucks coffee shop window. Uh, this is building D. And this is the passenger vehicle stacking. This is uh, providing 13 cars. Uh, originally, there were less cars being provided. Um, there is a, a proposed loading area uh, relocated from the east of Building H. Yeah, this is the east of Building H. This was the original loading area and dumpster area. And uh, these are now being relocated. The uh, loading area will be between Building D and uh, the Hart Jarvis Building. And the uh, refuse area is moving from the east of the Hart Jarvis building over to the, uh, the northwest corner of the parking lot. Uh, proposed parking for buildings C, D, and H are being reconfigured now. And uh, we're going to have a, a reduction of nine cars total as a result of this um, impervious coverage is changing from 74.8 percent to 74 percent so there's a reduction in impervious coverage uh, green space is changing from 3.76 acres to 3.88 acres now and these um, are indicated on sheet seats uh, sheet c2 uh, we're proposing the, uh, the name of the main driveway to Brainerd Place to be Hassan Way. And uh, this line in blue will be the um, Hassan Way. That indicates uh, mainly that's for purposes of address. This will not be a through road. This will only be for the apartment buildings building E and F. This will still remain blocked off. It's for emergency access only. I think we had something that showed it going yeah. both ways. Uh, that has been revised. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, there should be a revised drawing now that, that shows more of an L shaped configuration. That actually sure. was. I think that was submitted. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure. One thing I'll say, though, is the renaming of the, of the road to Hassan Way, I think that's more of the developer's choice. I don't, I don't think that's, as, as, long as, as, as far as I'm concerned, as long as public safety and the assessor are, are okay, I, I think that's kind of outside of. We weren't going to deny it. Don't well, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just saying, um, <laughs> if this works for public safety purposes, um, you know, I think that's great. Um, that's, that's one thing that, that we... Um, have been conscious of and that we were going to address with with the developers just to make sure that you know if, if fire or police need to get on site they're going to have a clear indication of what building and where to go so um, but I, I would say that it's very nice to, 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 to honor Fred like that and um, but it, it's more of the developers choice at this point yes uh, thank you Dan and that, that's why I'm stressing that um, 
this is mainly uh, this will still remain blocked off yeah. and uh, these buildings will have a Hassan way address these two buildings and the rest will be Main Street uh, the parking changes um, the provided parking is changing from 670 um, 600 763 spaces to 754 spaces now uh, handicap parking will be uh, increasing from 29 to 30 and uh, there is a parking space reduction waiver which is increasing from 22.9 percent to 23.8 percent also the parking allocation for buildings C D and A are being revised So there's nowhere, there's nowhere to put those, not, no place else to put those nine spaces? Or those um, no, um, no, basically, um, there was actually um, uh, engineering review where the engineer had commented on that, that particular aspect of it. Right. And uh, he stated, while this revision will result in the loss of nine spaces, it is, is likely that some of these spaces may not have been readily accessible due to conflicts with increased stacking length demand. Yeah. And uh, you know, I might add, too, that uh, the uh, Connecticut DOT uh, has um, revealed that they follow general rule based on national studies. This is the yeah, engineer that, that yeah. Just, so, so basically, this addresses Starbucks requirements, and it also complies with uh, the state of the art for uh, stacking. And it just just solidifies that we cannot get out of our cars. Sorry. <laughs> well, once you're on line for a coffee, you're, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're desperate to get that coffee, so. <laughs> So the, can you just, I just want to make sure I understand the traffic flow. When you come into Starbucks, I, I see the big green line that leads up to the building, but if you actually wanted to park and get out of your car and go into the building, what on earth would you do? You would uh, go past this driveway and park in any of these spaces here. There's uh, ample parking for Starbucks in front of the building. Okay. but. So, but so how would you do that though? I mean, you oh, because on our picture it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really. Sh okay, so you come in this way and you go kind of yeah. around. Okay. Yeah, th this is the main drive here, so this entire parking lot services okay. Building D and all of the other okay, buildings. And that's just so a crosswalk. Yeah. Okay. Correct. And and there's, like no, there's crosswalk <laughs> looks okay. like a barrier. It's not a barrier. It's a painted line, yeah, yeah. and okay. and basically, um, the whole front of Building D is available to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. There is also an outdoor eating area there, mm -hmm. so the, the entire area is open. Mm -hmm. The um, the stacking for the drive up is is a separate a separate entity. Right. So you would just come instead of taking a, a right, you would just come in straight and then look for your look for your parking space. You would take the second right mm -hmm. or the or the third right or the fourth right yeah. to go into the parking lot. And there's um, parking also for the Hart Jarvis yeah. building there. Well, all this parking is for Hart Jarvis. And, and we do have a parking allocation plan where everything is uh, outlined that shows which spaces go to uh, which building.
C8. Oh, you just had that 40 highlighted. I see. Right. That, that just shows how many cars are in that setting. So, for example, building B, we have 40 cars. Building H, our cars, we have 23, and so on and so forth. So, so part, of, part of what you're asking for um, approval for today, tonight, is um, this this parking allocation map? That's that's part of the uh, change, and that's part of what you're asking us to yeah, to look correct. at. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't have the the old one to compare the changes that you've made to. Um, the yeah, where did you take the nine out? They were along the side where this thing is. It's an overall change in geometry. <coughs> it is kind of hard to pinpoint where exactly those nine cars oh. are. It's just, it, it's like trying to put uh, five pounds of sugar in a uh, two pound bag, basically. Uh, and the shuffling around, they, they just, a lot of that, those nine cars came out of the driveway. Yeah, and I think it's two for the relocation of the um, the dumpster. dumpster and all that. Yeah. yeah. So, so like this area here. Yeah. Yes. Here. I, I believe that had parking spaces and right. because that's because being used as stacking area. And and this had two parking spaces here. I believe generally that's where they came out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it was just to the west. I think the east was always that island. So I think it was well, just... The east, we had the loading, we had the okay, yep, yep. And um, also an answer to that was not being part of the landscape. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a gain in landscape as well. Yep. In answer to your question about the allocation, the parking allocation, Anything else you'd like to cover, or are you open for questions? I'm open for questions. Okay, commission members, any questions? Any further questions? I just have a comment about the parking. Um, there have there have been reductions reductions in the parking, and mm -hmm. my only comment is that we have done that with the understanding that. If it turns out because of things changing, <coughs> you know, like just, just the way we have a lot of drive-in people now because people are 
picking up things more than they were before. We have some other change that results in having more people parking, like working from home and that sort of thing. The understanding is that there is additional capacity for parking on the property if, if that becomes an issue. Is that correct? Okay, further questions by commission members? Okay, this is a public hearing. Would anyone in the room like to make a comment or have a question regarding this application? Okay, seeing none, is there anyone in chat who would like to make a comment? <coughs> Nothing in chat. Okay, then I would make, did you want to speak then? have a motion then to close the public hearing for application 22-13 and a second second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed say no okay the public hearing for application 22-13 is now closed any discussion amongst commission members okay and dan i believe we would have a motion yeah, i have a motion i just want to say we probably don't need to read every single sheet into the record Okay. Um, if you don't want to, so if you just want to stop at zone B2 and then pick up, um, this approval is subject to the following instructions and conditions, uh, which is the last sentence. I think that will make your lives easier. Zone B2 is right there. Yep. So you can end here. Motion to approve application 22-1369 Marlboro Street, Main Street, and Marlboro Street. <coughs> request for special permit modification application and property of BRT DeMarco PTP LLC Assessor's Map 18, Lot 68, Zone B2. Dot, dot, dot. This approval, <laughs> this approval is subject to the following instructions and conditions that are integral to this approval. Huh. That one, that this approval will expire in five years. Two, that the certified letter of approval be placed in the plan. Three, that three paper copies and a mylar of updated sheets of the plan be submitted to the planning department for endorsement by an officer of the commission. The mylar shall be filed on the land records with 180 day, within 180 days as per zoning regulation section 10.5.3.2.A. Four, that a zoning permit application be submitted in accordance with zoning regulation section 11.1.1.A to ensure compliance with this approval. Five, that the plan is subject to a final review by the town engineer and fire, and fire marshal and that any comments from them must be addressed. Reasons. The proposal conforms to zoning regulation section 5 and 10.4 of the zoning regulations. <laughs> this is really funny. Uh, May I have a second to the motion, please? Second. Okay, we'll now vote. Victoria? Aye. <coughs> Chantel? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Tom? Aye. Bob, I vote aye. Any opposed? There would be none, so the application is approved. Okay, we'll move on to 
uh, our next public hearing, which is application 22-14, 54 Riverview Street, request for a special permit modification to construct a 24,000 square foot building with a 5,000 5, square foot mezzanine office area. Application of PDS Engineering and Construction, property of Burdon Property, LLC, Map 3, Lot 8, Zone R10. May I have a motion to open the public hearing, please? Mm -hmm. And a second? Second. And that was Tom. All in, <laughs> all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Everyone in favor of opening the public hearing. Thank you. Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Correct. Say no. Okay. Public hearing for application 22-14 is now open. Would someone like to speak on behalf of this application, please? Uh, my name is Frank Borowski. I'm with the PDS Engineering and Construction. I'm a licensed professional engineer as well as a surveyor. Uh, with me is Amanda Looker from Burdon. So if you're in the you should be able to answer any questions on this project. The team proposed a new uh, basically repair type facility for their boat business. Uh, it's a large the building footprint in the city is there. It's 24,000 square feet. And it's located to the left of the first boat of the uh, building that we're going to sign. This project is located to the left of that. If you go to the next page, again, you see that blue building. And you see the, the concrete, two concrete blocks. That's, that's the corners of the building, front corner. The next photo shows the concrete blocks. That's the rear corners of the building. And looking at the, you know, the rear property, you see the, the tree line. Mm -hmm. uh, the next photo after that is driving down the street. The view of the, the property is the left. And this is just a closer view. And again, going down the last photo, going down the left is the county street looking to the left. What color is it going to be? Well, the 
same as the It's going to be the blue to match the other. So I, I just want to make sure I understand the, um, the right. one on the bottom is the one that's out facing the street. As you, as you go down the, sh the street, the left, that would yeah. be the site you see on the left hand side first. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's that side. Oh, that side. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The rear facing is the, the shorter dimension. Right. Yeah. Right. So okay. That would be, that's this side right here with just one task order. And that, so that's facing the? The neighbors. Well, actually, no, this one's no. right. This is the one facing the neighbors with the small, small door. Okay. Small door in as well for access with the uh, carts. Great. So the east elevation is where the boats are going in and out. Yes. These are the Coast Guard. Majority of the boats in there will be the Coast Guard boats at the first. You know, and then the building will be utilized for other soldiers there as well. With the contract they have in place with the Coast Guard, So where, I'm, I'm a little, okay, so the rear is that one on the left? This, the, the one, this is the rear elevation right here. So if you're driving down okay, the street. Okay, so that's the front. Yeah, yeah. and so that, that's where you this have, yes. you'd have plantings to yes. cover the. The retaining wall that you refers yeah. to the okay. engineering Okay. Exactly. How, how tall is that building? <laughs> 45 feet in addition to the eight feet or oh it is right that's yeah right the bit just the building itself the building itself. Yeah. right so the whole thing sticks up 53 yeah, like feet. yeah 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 okay yeah. and you mentioned the mezzanine in the narrative where would that be yeah the mezzanine um, is on this side, you see the windows here? That's the mezzanine level. And that's where they'll have their, their offices as far as, you know, in order to support offices for the work mm -hmm. staff. So, so the, the, the door is on this side. The door is on the door is, the door is on here. Um, the this is building. the mezzanine, this is the door. Yes. Yeah. that you handed yep. out, this street view. Yes. Okay. Right now, I see the lot and I see boats. Yes. I won't see boats anymore. I'll see that, that building, correct? Yes. Yes, you'll see that. Right up, well, right up to the, almost well, to the corner. Actually, no, you might still see boats because this is still boat storage. Now, you don't think there'll be any there, Amanda? No, because there, there this is be. the street here, yes. right? So, so what, what you're going to see here, and, and the telephone poles, you're going to see something, you know, that's as tall as those clouds look, basically, uh, right? Oh, Big blue. Yeah, so not much different than the building that's there now, but, you know, six feet taller than an existing building. So it'll be um, kind of way down there. It won't be as high as the trees. It'll be shorter than some of the boats that are there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're like 50, yeah, plus 53 feet. Okay. okay. And they're out of the water. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about as high as that. Cloud. Where were the boat stores for the recreational boat? We have a total of 31 acres. Small area that's coming out of this doesn't make a huge difference. Um, Jeremy, you may be able to estimate how many boats vacancies lost. Jeremy, thanks for the Um I'm telling you right now. Uh,
some of the boats may go up back up in this corner again on a seasonal basis and constructing those stuff. <coughs> and I see on the plan you have some plantings in the, in the front. Yeah, between the building and the, that's that's the again shield part of that higher you know wall that's that is, yeah. so that one that requests the engineering. Yeah. Report. Yeah, so just to address that, and um, you know, I, I'll hold off on a couple things because I want to make sure you guys ask your questions, um, and then we can get into whether you want to do a conditional approval or not. But I would say that you know, based on Jeff's comment and the height of the wall, um, you might want to stipulate um, some larger shrubs and and, and um, plantings in front um, with with some more height and um, height and bulk to, to block that that side. Well, well, yeah, so that was just one of the two things. Uh, well, basically the one thing out of Jeff's memo I thought needed their, their, their input in on um, that, that we couldn't just make conditional. It was, you know, the, the commission's decision whether or not, you know, you guys should, they should stipulate or try to condition the approval that you, you have larger plantings. And, and, and what about on the other side of the building that's along the road there too? I don't see any plantings. Mark yeah, there. And right now, that entire uh, area is pavement, right? Or it's, uh, it's, gravel. it's oh, it's it's gravel. It's not. It looked like it was just concrete or something. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. So I think that's part of the reason Jeff wants a more robust yeah. uh, stormwater uh, system um, because you're you're taking away all that impervious right. surface. Yeah. So that would be obviously a condition that they would have to adhere to. Um, so basically, right now, um, I, I do have in the in the motion that they need to meet all of Jeff's comments from this the, the memo, and then also this is this is subject to a final engineering review as well. And we could we could add about the planting. Yeah, I would want to do that, and I would add something to our motion um, yeah. to to address that if you would like to. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're, you I would reviewed like to. Would you Jeff's like memo. Yeah. You're in agreement with all the comments. Yeah, I don't, I don't think in, as an engineer, we look at this stuff to see if there's like deal breaker stuff that can't be done and you know, somewhat of reasonable. And what he's looking at, because the, again, he wasn't um, in favor of the, the, the storm period that, that the other engineer took as far as design. So this, this Caltech system might get doubled in size. It's just going to move it a little more forward. Still, it's all underground system because they're going to be driving over it. So it's really, it's not a deal breaker. Right? So it's just a matter of working through the calculations with them. And like, like this plant needs to be easy if you have a bias and they'll grow up larger and they won't take up that much space and their root system won't, won't affect the drainage. So I don't know. <coughs> Making it beautiful. So, so yeah, the arbor vitae's are your choice. If if you would like to, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and just just to I guess on the conditional approval on Jeff's, if for whatever reason they could not meet Jeff's requirements, I would I would have them come back to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we wouldn't allow them to move forward until Jeff Jeff was satisfied. Okay, questions by commission members or comments? Okay, this is a public hearing. Would anyone in the room like to make a comment or have a question? Okay, seeing no one in the room, does anyone on chat have question or comment? Okay, seeing none. I would make a motion then that we close the public hearing for application 22-14. May I have a second? 
second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Say no. Okay. The public hearing for application 22-14 is now closed. Any discussion amongst commission members? I think we wanted to add right. the conditional uh, yep. condition to the approval. Yes, so do Arbor Vitae sound good to you guys? And then my other question is, and I'll ask our master gardener, what's the, what's the spacing on those generally? Do, well, do, do I mean, it depends. They get big, obviously, but. So I, mean, I, I just, I think. I what they had in there because it's a lot of native. It's, it's, there are a lot of native. Well, plants. so you could do Arbor Vitae and you then. You could do a mix. You could yeah. do kind of a mixture instead of the, you know, the. Well, that yeah, that so. straight row of yeah. Arbor Vitae's, which. Well, so, okay. That's, this is what we got to get a little more specific on. So, what is this? So, so the building's 120 feet wide there. Are you going to make us do math? Sure. <laughs> um, how many arborvitaes would you want to see planted in front? Do you want to see 30? One every four foot? Do you want to see 40? One every three no. foot? Um, no, do you want to see? Like no, we like to have it interspersed with the other things. So do you want to do 20 and then interspersed with native species? Yes. So that's one every uh, 12, no, six feet. Six feet. Yep. That's too close. I no, that's too close. Eight feet. Do it one every eight feet. I don't know if I have that one off the top of my head. Uh, 15? Well, 15. Don't they have landscape architects do Why don't we have them? Well, so I just want to make sure that you get enough of what you want to break up that. That's my only concern because if it, I mean you could say you know have a, land, a landscape architecture uh, present a plan and then uh, I don't want to say you could leave it up to my judgment I don't I don't necessarily like the latitude there but um, we could always contact the master gardener no we can't do that with oh. after the fact oh. so this says according to this chart it looks like they're saying 13 of each thing is that, am I reading that correctly? I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to go back and look. We can't yeah. ask them. You, you we, we can't, we can't, sorry. Total? Sorry, we can't, nope. Oh, oh. You, we're, we're closed, sorry. we can't, sorry. we can't ask. There, if you look on the plan, it shows 13 circles, so it's 13 plants. Total plantings. Oh, okay. Uh, For how many feet? 120. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Um, so, what did I say? Every eight feet for the that would be fifteen arborvitaes over one hundred twenty feet, and then other plantings interspersed. That would be nice if you could have, um, you know, even every ten feet, and then have a couple of these things in between each arborvitae. Like boxwoods or um, hmm? like a bo like boxwoods. Do, yeah. Do you want to specifically name the native species, or well, just allow like them the, to propose they, native like species? The, um, they the had winterberry, winterberry. They had winterberry, chokeberry, and the cho choke cherry. I think the winterberry, the choke cherry, and the viburnum. the viburnum, or even the the high bush blueberry. Either those. Yeah. Okay, Those so four would be good. what I'm hearing is 12 arborvitaes interspaced with a mixture of native plants as proposed originally by the applicant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I will just make sure that that is an adequate number of plants. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Can you say that you... Can we say that we want those four in particular? Or no? We could. I just didn't want to write that okay. down. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty ugly as it is. I uh, this I was rushing to do this. So uh, okay. All right. All right. So twelve arborvitaes. I don't know, but this is close enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, spaced ten feet apart. Part with native plants interspersed I don't know if I'm spelling a lot of this stuff right um, <laughs> yeah. with what are the four plants? 
it's a uh, just put down well ilex verticula well okay look put down winterberry <laughs> choke cherry viburnum and blueberry winterberry choke, cho choke cherry choke c h o k e cherry choke okay yes okay uh, what were the other ones viburnum how do you spell that v i b u r n u m Blueberry. And winter blueberry? No, just, just blueberry. blue. Just put oh, down just blueberry. blueberry. Okay. Portland schools, what can I say? Oh, man. <laughs> I, well, I'm not good <laughs> spelling. I, I, I grew up here. Everything else was good, just not the spelling. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, I apologize. I, uh, I crossed some stuff up, but I think yeah. that's somewhat legible. That goes down to Carolyn. <laughs> Baby. Is it a long one? We're going to oh. take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, get ready. To approve application 2214-54 Riverview Street, request for a special permit modification to construct a 24,000 square foot building with a 5,000 square foot mezzanine office area. Application of PBS Engineering and Construction. Property, property of Burden Property, LLC, Map 3, Lot 8, Zone R10. As shown on a site of plan set entitled Proposed Site Plan 54 Riverview Street, including property and topographic survey map, dated 9-25-22, page S1, site layout plan, dated 11 22 page C1, site development plan, dated 11 22 page C2, soil erosion and sediment control plan, dated 11 22 page ES1, details dated 11 22 page D1, details dated 11 22 page D2, prepared by Harry E. Cole and Sons and based on all plans, renderings, and information submitted, testimony provided and subject to the following instructions and conditions that are integral to this approval. <coughs> Excuse me. One, that this approval will expire in five years. Two, that three paper copies of the final revised plan and one mylar be sub submitted to the Planning and Zoning Department for endorsement by an officer of the commission. The endorsed mylar shall be filed on the land records within 90 days as per zoning regulation section 10.5.3.2.A. Three, that the certified letter of approval be placed on the revised final plan. Four, that any exterior light fixtures must comply with zoning reg section 8 and must be approved by the zoning enforcement officer, officer prior to installation. Five, that a zoning permit be issued prior to the start of activity associated with this approval. Six, that the applicant meet comment from the fire marshal memo dated 12 9 Seven, that an EAS key box be installed on the building for emergency access. Eight, that the applicant address comments for the town engineer's memo dated 12 13 22. Nine, then an e &S bond and site restoration bond in an amount to be determined by the town engineer be submitted prior to endorsement of the plan if required. Ten, that all e &S controls be installed and or maintained per the plan and inspected by town staff prior to any land disturbance activities if required. Eleven, that any signage requires a signage permit and must conform to zoning reg section 8.4. 12, that the plans are subject to a final engineering review and that all items from this review are addressed. 13, that a zoning permit be issued prior to the start of activity associated with this approval. 14, 12 arborvitaes spaced 10 feet apart with native plants interspersed with winterberry, chokecherry, viburnum, and blueberry. Reasons, the proposal conforms to section four and 10.5 of the zoning, zoning regulations. May I have a second to the motion? Second. Okay, we'll now vote. Uh, Victoria? Aye. Chantel? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Tom? Aye. Mrs. Bob, I vote aye. Any opposed? There would be none, so the application is approved. Okay, good luck. <coughs> so the next item, I believe, is for information only. 
Um, this is application 22-12, 378 Cox Road, request for 11 lot subdivision on a property containing wetlands. Application of Tom Briggs, property of Sonat Inter Properties LLC, map 78, lot 21, zone RR, forest neighborhood overlay zone. And we'll open this public hearing at our next meeting on January 5th. Okay, so we will move on to our regular meeting then. So. <laughs> we finally got here. <laughs> We're in our regular meeting. So, um, this is um, application 22 11, 47 Lower Main Street and adjacent town lot. Request for site plan modification for. 12,560 square foot addition and new parking lot. Application and property of 47 Lower Main and the town of Portland <coughs> LLC. Map 19, lots 82 and 83, zone I. So Dan, would you like to talk to us about this one? Which one, 47? Yeah, 47 Lower, because this is not a public hearing, right? Right, yep. Yeah, um, do you want the applicant to, to, to go over it, or did you have specific questions you wanted to be answered first? No, I guess we can ask, ask for an overview by the applicant, if you would. A little presentation just to okay. Hi, everyone. Happy holidays. Um, Andrew Simino with uh, GC National. I'm here on behalf of 47 Lower Main Street LLC. Um, they're proposing uh, a building addition. Um, this addition is to be able to um, uh, be able to increase in capacity. We will meet the uh, the new adult use program uh, that's coming into the state. Um, sales for that uh, this for cannabis. Sorry, sales for that start actually on January 10th of 2023. So they're ha it's starting pretty soon. So in order to kind of ramp up and meet that, um, these additions proposed will take us eight to 10 months to build. So it would be likely 14 months so we have a product out of those. So um, basically here tonight, just to encourage to try to get this project moving. Um, we definitely understand that there are some outlying conditions uh, from, from the town engineer. Um, I brought Mark here, our civil engineer, uh, just to go over some of those specifics if they come up. But um, basically, we're we're willing to meet all those. Um, we understand that would be meted beyond a conditional basis. Um, some of the one of the reasons that we weren't so comprehensive and basically was able to meet everything in our plan is because um, this does include an agreement. Uh, between 47 Lower Main LLC and the town because the parking will be replaced from the property across the street into the town lot. Um, would you mind uh, going to, to the next slide? I don't know if you guys can see that well, but basically um, you see that town lot, the dirt lot, that's, that's gonna house about 50 cars. Um, we did do a preliminary plan for that it's just the hard part is since we don't own the lot it's two parcels um we can't go in there and survey it and kind of look at the elevations for drainage and stuff like that we know it's possible and we've had discussions with ryan curley dan um it's uh moving towards an agreement but because that's all not in place um this would have to be conditional on us getting that parking uh, and if you look at the building, which is across the street, sort of that white um, roof there, there's three small, or there's one small addition and two larger additions, those are outlined in green. Um, the makeup is about 12,000 square foot of additional space. The two larger additions are two stories. That's all going to be additional flower um, that we're gonna be cultivating. Um, yeah, I, I, so I guess that kind of sums it up. It, specific questions. And the, the approval is for everything, for the addition and the parking. 
So the, 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 I guess the biggest condition of approval, besides the, I guess the normal ones that we've had today, that they, they, they address the comments from the fire marshal and the, the town engineer, uh, would be that the applicant come to a binding agreement with the town of Portland and produce a written affidavit of agreement as per section 8.2.4 of the zoning regulation that meets all parking requirements for proposal per section 8.2 of the zoning regs. So th that would be a, a, a pretty big condition, but they would have to come back to us once an agreement was made by the town, um, come back to us with Jeff, get all that parking reviewed, make sure they meet all of our requirements. Um, and if they did so, we, we'd, we'd allow them, we'd, we'd issue a, a, a building and a zoning permit. Um, so a lot of it does come down to, to the parking facilities themselves. But if, say, for whatever reason, the town and, and the applicant can't come to an agreement on the parking, this, this application would be uh, mute, uh, mute at that point. Um, Absolutely, and we agree on that. that is the okay, because he didn't have a whole lot of comments on the building mm -hmm. itself. It was mm -hmm. or, uh, really, really? Or on the parking. Right, yeah, I believe, I believe yeah. he did have one comment on uh, the sewer. Uh, there's a sewer. Sewer line. Yeah, <laughs> and so, um, that would have to be uh, uh, Ashley Majorowski um, back in 2017 when uh, Wayne Rand originally got his, uh, the initial expansion on that building done. Um, they would have to follow the same process going through Public Works yeah. um, in order to uh, put those additions in uh, over that easement. We did, I, if I, can I just- Yeah, absolutely. Up? So we did meet with Public Works. Uh, we met with Ryan. Um, and we actually opened up the manhole that's there um, that was part of that um, original sewer line that was abandoned. And we were able to verify it's only that new addition that's going into there um, and not the one uh, from the neighboring properties. Like there's some old plans that show something, but it was abandoned. So we verified that was abandoned. And so basically I do have on the site plan, but we basically just have to relocate that manhole outside of the new footprint and then tie back into it. Um, so we did go over that. We do agree with that. We did draw it that way. Okay. There's, there's also a comment about loading area. Um, yeah. I didn't, I'm not sure I yeah. follow. Yeah, like I did About I Lower didn't Main Street, Airline all. Avenue. Let me, if you don't mind, let me Could you explain that? So you could, yeah. Uh, would you mind going to the next one? Um, keep, keep going, please. Uh, one more. Does that show more? Yeah, it shows it. Well, it shows Are you guys able to see that? Yeah, on the, on the original plan, there was a little area right this area, which we removed from the plan. Yeah, exactly. So, you can see it, but um, right here, we put a loading area, and we we're going to currently everything gets loaded in from the yard, from the property, into an overhead door here. So the original plan showed that overhead door being relocated to this side and then another, um, like a driveway here. But the comment was that there's only about 24 feet here. So to unload a large truck, it'd have to be unloaded in the road. So we actually removed it and we're gonna keep the loading area where it originally was. Okay. So, and, and then just to explain a little further, basically the new process because there's not a lot of space left on the lot, right? So the new process is everyone parks over here. There's a crosswalk, specific lighting and all that. The product comes in here, and then there's a second driveway we're putting in. This would be for just small vans. This is where the product leaves. So it comes in this side, grown, process, leaves this side. What was that side? So on the drawing you have there, is that it? That's the parking area across the street. Yes, okay. this is the uh, this is the new for parking. the employees. Yes, so yeah. there's there's 50 spots. It'll likely be 40 employees in 16 months once it's ramped up. So you um, would divide it off from the rest of that parking area. Yeah. So if you like, if you see this line right here, that's what I was saying about there's even though the town owns all this, it's like three separate parcels. So it has to be either combined or something has to be done with that. Um, and I think that's, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's kind of why we're doing this practice because 
until it's an actual thing, we didn't want to go through and do all the agreements. Right, and the Board of Selectmen are trying to do um, their due diligence on how they want to, to handle this transaction um, or sale. So th they're working out the details as to how land, the land would be transferred, um, whether the town, they're working out all the details on how that's gonna happen. And then the applicant will go do the design we will do our reviews uh, in the land use department with Jeff and make sure that meets all of our requirements. Um, and, and at that point, the town could come to a binding agreement with the applicant as per our, our regulations. Uh, Cause really, uh, you know, that lot becomes integral to, to the operation of that building. So it has sufficient parking to operate. Um, and so I, I, you know, the, I think the board of selectmen just want to do their due diligence um, to get the best deal for the town um, that they can. I assume you've talked to the neighbors on the other side. <clears throat> so, yeah. um, <clears throat> did you say, did, did we talk to the neighbors? I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that so, you've yeah, talked to the neighbors. Yeah. And Unfortunately, uh, both neighbors aren't really willing to uh, proceed forward with a, we, we did talk about purchasing or leasing or a, a bunch of different variations. So just to be fully transparent, like on one side is, um, gosh, what is their name? They do like the um, restoration. Um, Us. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, yep. DRS, silo, D DRS, property on, yeah. DRS, yep. Yes, DRS, so DRS Day. has a lease. So even if we were to purchase, they would still be in the building because they have a lease agreement. So there's a complexity there. So maybe in a couple of years, if they want to move or something, we could go there. Uh, we tried that. The same thing with, uh, with Ben, the other property with the uh, garages and the silo. So we even discussed renting the silo for storage or some sort of combination, but it hasn't gotten it anywhere. Um, but definitely want to be able to go one way or the other to be able to expand even further in the future. Um, so those conversations will keep going, but I don't think that would replace us needing this parking. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that the, I, I know the people with the silo and I'm surprised that he's not more open to talking to you about. Me too. And we, you know, this obviously the value to us to be able to expand is, is huge. It's way over what a real estate cost of one of those buildings would be and being very upfront reasonable trying to you know um encourage and it's it's still not enough so you know um we get mm -hmm. so that's where we're at right now but this just to be clear i mean this these additions are built well economical it is a state-of-the-art process it's not like this is a alternative because we can't really do something else like we would want to do these additions anyways and then make it even make it larger. Um, you know, the, in reality, if this is 24,000 square feet, it's still, some of the processes are still tight within the building, like the production process. It's nice to have places to store things and, and, and you know, in a good, clean, dry environment. So we are sort of making some sacrifices to be in this tight area, but it's, I think the future expansions would be more for production, more for storage, just to make us be able to breathe a little better, keep the products, um, you know, better conditions, things like that. So it's it's not all that bad. It actually run pretty well. Add 25 more employees probably, um, you know, so. Okay, any further questions or comments? <clears throat> okay, so Dan, do we have a motion for this application? We do. Okay, this one goes all the way down, Tom. Okay. All right, spread no wealth tonight. Got plenty of it. <laughs> uh, make a motion. 
to approve application number 22-1147 Lower Main Street and adjacent town lot. Request for site plan modification for 12,560 square foot addition and new parking lot. Application and property of 47 Lower Main and the town of Portland, LLC, map 19 lots 82 and 83, zone I, as shown on the site development plan, titled Site Development Plan for 47 Lower Main Street, conceptual plan dated 11 4 and revised to 11 16 Page 1, notes and details dated 11 4 and revised to 11 16 Page two, as well as described in narrative and based on information submitted, testimony presented during hearing, and subject to the following instructions and conditions integral to this application. One, that the applicant complies with the comments and conditions from the fire marshal for memo dated 11 22 Two, that the applicant addresses comments from the town engineer's memo dated 12922. Three, that the certified letter of approval be placed on the site plan and that a mylar and three paper copies of the plans be submitted. After endorsement, the mylars must be filed on the land records within 180 days per ZR section zoning reg section 10.5.3.2A. These requirements must be met prior to the issuance of a zoning permit. Four, that a zoning permit application be submitted in accordance with the zoning regulation section 11.1.1A to ensure compliance with this approval. Five, that any exterior light fixtures must comply with zoning regulation section 8.3 and must be approved by the zoning enforcement officer prior to installation. Six, that all proposed improvements associated with this application are to be completed according to the approved plan prior to the issuance of the required certificate of zoning compliance to operate businesses at this new building. Or a performance bond will be required in accordance with zoning regulation section 11.2.2. Seven, any proposed signage shall meet zoning regulation section 8.4. 8. That this approval will expire in five years. 9. That the applicant come to a binding agreement with the Town of Portland and produce a written affidavit of agreement as per section 8.2.4 of the zoning regulations that meets all parking requirements for the proposal per section 8.2 of the zoning regulations. Reasons. The proposal can Forms to section 6 and 10.5 of the zoning regulations. May I have a second to the motion, please? Second. Okay, we'll now vote. Victoria? Aye. Chantel? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Tom? Aye. Bob, I vote aye. Any opposed? There would be none, so the application is approved. Okay, we'll move on then. Um, Next item is to receive in applications. There's one, application 22-15-1401 Main Street, proposed two lot three subdivision, application and property of Cody Range, LLC, map 68, lot one, zone R-25. Yes. That's the driving range, four corners. Yep, had to look it up. You're on the ball. I gotta earn myself. <laughs> okay, um, so we'll move on to old business. Update to zoning regulations for cannabis. So I, I don't have much on this for you guys. Basically, Good. I think last time we <laughs> talked, it was the f we were gonna do the four mile uh, radius. So I'll, what I'll try to do is, is type up draft language before the January fifth meeting. We can go over that. I will have Carrie review it, and then hopefully we can vote either at the second meeting in January or the first meeting in February, prior to the moratorium expiring. And we'll, we'll get this when? done. End of February. Okay. This is taking 
So it's a good well, thing we uh, yeah. went six months. Yeah. Six months yeah. Based on some sage advice. Well, I, I think uh, you guys have Bring taken a very conscientious table. and deliberate uh, <laughs> process, and you're 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 just making sure that it's it's done right. That's right. Yeah, that's, keep, keep that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's thanks to Por the Portland school system, by the way. <laughs> okay, but you still can't spell. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, next item. Is I, will, I will say the two gentlemen who and Dave who who, who help they're they're much more uh, a shining beacon of Portland than, than I. <laughs> okay. Okay. Move on. Online material rep repository and training. Okay, so uh, obviously I'm having issues sharing directly from uh, Google Drive. For whatever reason, it keeps saying it's inappropriate, uh, planning and zoning stuff. Um, but I just wanted to, does, has everybody gotten at least the link that I've sent? Yeah. You're and able to open working. the link. Why can't you just do that? I, I, haven't, I haven't noticed if I've gotten. I, I did send it to the, the farm manager, the link. You did? Yes. Open that little icon that looks like a is letter. Is it? Is it? Are you? It's your mail. <laughs> uh oh. Watch out, Bob. Yeah. Tread lightly. I can do a lot of things, but oh, she's gonna but she's gonna stick an emu on you. It's being recorded. I don't know. It's being recorded. <laughs> okay, we'll wait for Victoria to report back then. I'm okay. Sorry. okay. All right, and eventually we will just move over to that. Uh, but I want to make sure we're we're all. Good uh, in, in that department yeah. before we, you know, I don't want you to miss yeah. something. Yep. Okay, thanks. Uh, next item potential solar regulation changes for sustainable CT. Um, so I haven't gotten to the last thing that we need to do. Okay. Um, so that, that, that's, we can skip that. Okay. Next one is electrical vehicle charging station. So I haven't done a ton on that, but I did, uh, <laughs> I did notice, uh, I did uh, do the, the research on, uh, Victoria's question on uh, kind of the prevalence of EVs in Connecticut. So I sent two uh, links to two articles, yeah, so yeah. one with yeah. that kind of documents how many EVs are there, and that the other one was an insider article, I think, of, about something else. So, I, I so that was very interesting, mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah. What I would like to see, if anyone is doing any sort, sort of projections, so five years from now, ten years from now, yeah, I probably can find that. What percentage of the vehicles on the road will be EVs? Did you send that G, the G, to the Gmail thing? No? no, I've been using your farm manager. Do you want me to use a different? No, no, no. no, no. I could do. I could do both. No, I like I sent. I sent Chantel. I sent them to both. This Comcast and Gmail. Oh, you sent I it to my Gmail. I haven't had a minute to send them. Oh, they yeah. just came today, Victoria. Yeah, I. I yeah, I. Yeah. I I'm just very behind it. I, I, I'm I'm right with you. Trust job. me. <laughs> it's it's uh. Other than some things. So okay, we'll move on. You're in good. Just, we're in good company then, right? Okay. Um, move on to uh, staff report. So any correspondence? No correspondence. Greater place update. I I think you guys got the uh, uh the bit of the, the modification. That's that's kind of the, the update today. I I believe um. They're close to putting, uh, getting approval for the first foundation for the first building. And then. Um, Is the hope still to do that before winter sets in for real? I, I believe yes, but I'm, I'm, it may have gotten too cold. It just gets difficult to, to dig. Um, so, they'll and then pour the concrete when it's, froze, when it's freezing out. It's hard, you can't really they'll pour work concrete. Right through water. Any clerk of the works discussion? Yeah, no, yeah, we're not. Just heat it. We won't be doing that, sorry. I, I mean. So we don't, I think, like I explained last time, we don't do the clerk of the works because it's a private project and not a town. You know, so like when we were doing like sewer line replacement or if we ever do the new water system, something like that, we'll have okay. somebody there to make sure that they're meeting their deadlines and we're not paying too much. Okay, and what about um, adhering to the um, standards for the... Oh yeah, no, we're gonna hire somebody for that. So um, like with... Um, the inspections that will be done for the stormwater management of that property, as well as the new water and sewer lines that go in. Um, so like the water line, the 12 inch water main that's going in, um, the town is gonna take over. So on that stuff, we, we, we have a whole inspection uh, regime with Jeff Jacobson because that's uh, that infrastructure is more integral to the town. So I guess in that regards, we have a little bit of a clerk of the works uh, for that, that work. 
Um, and then all the other outstanding zoning and building things will be handled by myself and the building official. I'm sure I'm still not sure whether he will require help. Um, if he do, if he does it by himself, he he it's going to be really impressive to be honest because uh, it's a lot a lot of work. Um, and then on the uh, the historical building side of things, yeah, we we'll we'll have to get in uh, some help. Um, now I think I don't want to put it all on the historic society. Although I'm sure they'll be a great resource, I, I think we need a little more professional. Well, the, 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 yeah. yeah, to meet the connect, uh, the, sec, uh, the professional. Yeah, Secretary of the Interior standards on that re restoration. I know <clears throat> they finally got the demo approval for the small uh, back area for Hart Jarvis, mm -hmm. uh, and Historic Society did ask them to save some things, and and they are complying with those uh, requests. That's pretty much all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item then is public comment. Any anybody in the public like to make any brief comments at this time? Nothing okay, no nothing in chat. No one in the room. Okay, we'll move on. Approval of the minutes. Um, Rob is not here. I don't believe we can approve the minutes from December one. So we'll. We just need three people, don't we? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay, then we can approve the minutes from. So. <coughs> May I have a motion to I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Okay, the minutes from December 1 are approved, and the next item is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. In favor, say aye. 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 Opposed?